This video is going to be a look at how the Ravens defense represented with um, Terrell Suggs in, in, the, in the stadium to get inducted into the Ring of Honor, really overwhelming the first three possessions. The fourth possession, they also get a stop, a fourth down pass to Iman Ross St. Brown falls incomplete. Incredible effort by this defense. When you combine that with how well the offense played in the first three, first four possessions, really, probably could have got a fifth touchdown in the second quarter. The overwhelming closing speed and burst that this Ravens defense is showing, I think, hopefully stands out in the tape that I'm getting ready to show you. I'm going to break down, I think, every play from the first three possessions and then a couple from the fourth. No mean, I don't mean this to be disrespectful, but there really weren't that many plays that the Lions ran. The running game couldn't get going at all. I was kind of shocked to see their offensive line get overwhelmed in some situations uh, by Owe, Matabike, Pierce. Those guys, play, they have a ton of length. In some cases, I think some of our guys are playing faster than their individual speed. I'm thinking about like Brandon Stevens. All of his reactions are so sudden and abrupt. He just makes plays. Uh, we stopped the run. I know, you know Jameer Gibbs had a, two great possessions in the second half, showed his ability. He did have that 21-yard touchdown run. Um, in the second half. But, man, I'm going to focus on these first four possessions, give you the all-22 and end zone angle from some of these plays. A couple of surprising things. Let's get to the uh, first possession. First possession, first play of the game. I'm not sure about you. I'm a little surprised here. The Lions have an inside linebacker on the field here on offense. they got 21 personnel, and I guess they're treating Malcolm Rodriguez as a fullback. They're running power at a joker set. We're in our seven-man front, our base defense. So it's not like it really fooled us or anything. I'm I'm just I'm interested in in what the thought process was there as opposed to just having a second tight end on the field. I know Jason Cabinda, their typical fullback's been um, injured for a while. The Ravens are in under front. I'll show you the end zone angle in a moment. So <clears throat> as the guard combos down on Pierce, he just doesn't stay on him long enough. Pierce is able to um, shed that block and be a part of it. It's the Ravens' willingness and commitment to get to the football. Uh, you can see Roquan Smith taking on the block, damn near right at the line of scrimmage. Line of scrimmage is negative 38. He does get you know, uh, pushed backwards by the lead blocker, but the point is where he takes on the block. It's the commitment level. Uh, again, we're in the under front, so you got a one, you got a five, and you got a, a nine. That's an under front to the tight end. Forgive me, I can't draw with this uh, crappy little app I got. But watch Roquan uh, take this block on downhill near the line of scrimmage. And then Pierce going to fold back to the play side. Uh, Marvin Harrison probably could do a little bit better job. Marvin Harrison, Malik Harrison could probably do a little bit better job taking on this kick out block by Malcolm Rodriguez, if you ask me. He goes down for a three or four yard gain. This next one, I think, is a great effort by Jamison Williams on this little out to the boundary, but it shows you Stevens. Uh, it's ruled incomplete, by the way. Williams out of bounds. It shows you, shows you how close Stevens is in coverage a lot of times. And not giving up deep balls. I mean, we haven't seen him give up deep balls. We haven't seen him get beat deep yet. So he's just playing fast and reacting to things, not giving golf uh, much of a window to throw the ball other than, you know, to the sideline. Also, Ravens are in three-man rush here. We dropped out Owe. We're in a three-man rush. Max, pro here. There's really not anybody open other than Jamison Williams to the sideline. Golf had to throw this ball a little further to the sideline because as he's pulling the pin on the grenade, he sees that Brandon Stevens is in the window. So he can't throw this ball in a stand-up position. So part of that is forced, if you ask me, by uh, Brandon Stevens being in great position. And then this is a sack by Matabike. <clears throat> Give you the end zone angle. He's going to stunt through here. And I think he's supposed to pick so Pierce can loop around. Shocking that this, the way that this works, not that it's a pick screen that the works, but I mean, he just splits the defenders. There's just really a slow recognition, I think, by the offensive line here. Additionally, look at the force that Oway plays with on this, you know, against Sewell. Penny Sewell, one of the best right tackles, you know, in the game. So we'll do the all 22 angle one time and you'll see Oway right around this area just swim over the top and Sewell just didn't look like he was he didn't look super sharp to me. He's an extremely high-level tackle. He's kind of leaned forward a little bit. Always physicality and burst, man, is a real thing. And the ball, you know, ends up – I don't know if it's a – recovered it, was ruled as a fumble or what, but Sewell recovered it, and we get a great tackle uh, by Marlon Humphrey on a big right tackle. So here's the attempted screen pick from Matabike. It just basically splits these guys. The design of it, I think, Pierce is supposed to loop around, and Oway is on a uh, hard-coded outside rush, if you ask me to time that up with that stunt and ruins the Lions' first possession where really nothing got established other than the fact that Justin Matabike is a huge problem. 
and it might be a problem for us to re-sign him at this point, obviously. So that's the first possession. And meanwhile, the Ravens' offense is rolling. Second possession here, and this is going to be a wonderful job by Stevens down to the boundary. Uh, Gibbs is going to go out in the flats. And live speed on a broadcast, I thought this was our coverage where the safety spins down to the running back, and it certainly looks like it to me. But nonetheless, Stevens releases him inside, so it works out for our favor. So here's what I'm talking about. Normally to the boundary, if the running back goes out into the flats, and let's say you get a vertical by number one, Stevens will run with the vertical. Queen will go play the back. It's kind of standard, the backside of trips, or it's a bunch set. In this case, the running back releases. Queen goes. And from my experience, what the Ravens have run this year when they do that, uh, the safety is spinning down to take the running back, and Stevens is going to be manned on the receiver. Well, watch Stevens release the receiver inside here and then go with the running back. I think there's a little bit of a potential that this was a mix-up here, but, you know, it works out in our favor. We got Stone and Stevens there, only a two-yard gain. To me, that looks like a coverage that we normally play where the running back releases into the flats, to the boundary, and the safety goes with him. Second and eight after that two-yard gain, and this is away from the backside. I'll show you the all 22. Um, he's kind of half man in this, meaning he's kind of waiting to confirm that the running back's got the ball because you obviously have golf setting up the play-action boot out here. Oway, once he sees the ball is in the running back's hand, folds down inside. It does end up being a four-yard gain for Craig Reynolds, but you can see the explosiveness that Oway has. We'll show you from the end zone angle. He's going to be on the left-hand side of the screen right here. you got your outside zone to our right, right-hand side of the screen. Ravens' defense is left. Also, Geno Stone is involved down here to try to make that running back cut it back. Ends up being a four-yard gain, sets up a third and four, and I think you get a good job here by Kyle Hamilton on Sam Laporta up to the top side of the field, to the boundary, which is where we talked about Laporta's generally located. The Ravens are passing this off between Arthur Millett and Brandon Stevens down here to the bottom side of the screen. Number 80, I think Green was on more than I would have uh, suspected for the Lions, but you can see Millett with some type of hand signal right here for Stevens, giving him a, a clue as to what to do because you got this stacked release. Millett and Stevens release St. Brown underneath. And you can see the physicality the Ravens are playing with. Queen is making contact with St. Brown. We only on a four-man rush. Goff's getting rid of the football to Hamilton or to uh, Laporta. Hamilton's on him. And you can see that that would have had to be a, a really perfectly thrown ball to, to get a completion there and get a first down. So you got two possessions and two three and outs. Shocking for me at this point. You know, the Lions have been able to move the football on many good defenses this year and could do nothing early on against the Ravens. Third possession, 11 personnel uh, the, to the boundary. You got Laporta again, and the running back Gibbs in this kind of like stand-up, uh, unusual stance. I always love this when running backs are in no stance, but people do it. You know, it's a, Nick Chubb does that as well. So it's downhill to the boundary, <clears throat> and the right tackle Sewell and Laporta are both coming out on to uh, Jadavion Clowney. So you got combo block here by the center and the guard on the D tackle and the right tackle and tight end working on Clowney. So they're trying to get us downhill. They're trying to come at us right now and get double teams. And Queen comes downhill, and that's Van Noy on the backside. You know, he was just so active and involved in everything. Only ends up going down for a three-yard gain. You know, when I watch the replay of this, I'm like, man, it looks like it's going to be a four-, five-, six-yard gain, but there's nothing there. The Ravens' passion and energy and effort level is incredible, if you ask me. Sets up a second and seven, and this is a sack. This is a brilliant example of Mike McDonald. He does this early in games, guys. I, I think three times this year we've seen this blitz. And by the way, I saw this week one last year against the Jets early, first quarter, meaning uh, early in the game you get D tackles dropping out of here and then blitzing off the edge with Arthur Millette, just totally unblocked, unaccounted for, because Van Noy is such a smart player. Look at him occupying the left tackle because he knows the blitz that's coming. These D tackles are dropping out of here to try to take away underneath stuff. Goff recognizes it too late. Look at the coverage relationship that we've got. Hey, if we play this game 10 times, does it work out this way one more time in the remaining nine games? I'm not so sure, but, man, this was brilliant stuff from the Ravens' defensive guys. Mike McDonald with this call totally took him out of this possession. It goes down as a nine-yard loss. I think it's Arthur Millette's second sack of the season. Uh, for the Ravens, and he's just balling. We've got so many safety injuries that we've dealt with, and it's like every nickel that we you know plug in there just does the job. Look at Van Noy, smart, taking on the left tackle. Roquan occupying the left guard. This is all designed to get this nickel free off the edge. 
away from the running back's release into the boundary. Mike McDonald did a great job. We did that Jedi picture preview, and um, for whatever reason, Ben Johnson's guys didn't get anything going. Mike McDonald had all the answers early. Third and 16 is going to be complete to um, Laporta. I think it's cover three. Third and 16 is 13 yard completion. This is one of the things that Mike McDonald does: long down and distance play, cover three, let you throw it underneath. I like how the Ra I like how the Ravens are doing it, though. If you ask me, we're dropping Queen out to the curl flat. Hamilton's going to sit down on the hash. Roquan's going to sit down on the other hash. I think this is Millette into the curl flat. That's your underneath umbrella, the four under. Steven's got a little bit of a, sl uh, a slower get off. He's tempo in the route by number one. And you can see that the safety is over the top of number two here. You may very well have a man call on the backside for Marlon Humphrey. But in any case, ends up being a completion to Laporta that the Ravens kind of gave him underneath. Third possession, third consecutive three and out. Punt. I don't know about you, man, but this is not what I was expecting this Ravens defense to do. We have excellent defense, and I think all of us, myself included, don't know how damn good they are. Got a little bit of inkling about it on Sunday. <clears throat> Fourth possession, the Lions were actually able to get near midfield at one point, and then you have this unique sequence where, at this point, they're, they understand the situation. They've got to get points. Van Noy's going to get a sack on the first play. Goff kind of tries to scramble out of here on the bottom. This is not the first play of the drive. They've reached midfield after uh, three plays. We're bringing Marlon off the edge. Again, being unpredictable. Dropping Queen out over the receiver to the boundary. I mean, who's open? Who's available? I mean, maybe you could get the ball to Laporta late, but there's a defender out here. Goff doesn't certainly have a great window. He senses the pressure from Marlon, who almost gets a sack. And then Van Noy finishes him off. Our speed... And the timing on our blitzes was immaculate on Sunday. I don't know about you. I'd love to see our defense play like this every week. Uh, it's difficult to imagine that we can go and, and take an offense that was scoring 28 points per game prior to Sunday and do stuff like this to everyone we play. But it sure would be fun to watch. Loss of two, second and two, second and 12, excuse me. This is incomplete to St. Brown. And Brandon Stevens is just disruptive, man. You know, some miscommunication or not being on the same page between Goff and um, <clears throat> St. Brown up at the top side of the screen. But Brandon Stevens physical. Look at the punch. He's totally disrupted the posture of St. Brown. Maybe the contact is to the chin. I don't know. But, man, Brandon Stevens is balling. He is just balling. And he's making things difficult on everybody. Uh, his coverage relationship is fantastic. Third and 12. This one's going to be uh, complete to St. Brown. Again, over there dealing with Stevens. Stevens has this technique down perfect of, of leveraging the route and keeping eyes on the quarterback, being able to break on it. Maybe he won't get another pick this year, but I'll take it if he plays coverage like this all year long. And then, yeah, look, St. Brown had 11 or 12 catches. I thought Brandon Stevens did an excellent job with everybody that was matched up against him over there. Creates this fourth and eight. You already know how this ends. This is Arthur Millette, our I mean, this is St. Brown. One, he's one of the best football players in the league, in my opinion, especially at the slot position. Millette does a great job here. Kyle Hamilton does get away with contact downfield. The announcers, I think Greg Olson covered it uh, live during the game. So, you know, that is that is reality. But Arthur Millette, great coverage relationship on uh, St. Brown, and he's being physical with him. Goff's getting rid of the football on an outside, you know, cut by St. Brown, and it's just not there. Amazing start for the Ravens' defense. Four, when you can get four stops – to open a game and your offense be as overwhelming as we were, it's going to be very difficult to blow that lead. And I know as Ravens fans, me personally, I was still worried, you know, uh, to be real, I was still worried. Marlon, a little bit, you know, behind on Khalif Raymond here. Looks like we're playing man free with a low hole dropper and Geno Stone in the middle of the field. We are so multiple in coverage. We give so many looks to quarterbacks. Uh, people said, you know, golf was seeing ghosts. I don't, I don't, use that terminology. I don't buy that stuff, but everything we did was high level. Everything we did was with in, incredible speed and burst and the closing speed on things. I look at that catch by Jamison Williams, I think on the second play of the game, it's, you know, ruled out of bounds. It looks like a great effort by Jamison Williams to me. Stevens made the window small and was still on top of the route enough to where he could hopefully turn and go if Williams ran a, a vertical, which I think is, you know, what Jamison Williams is is best suited to do right now is run verticals. He's going to make plays like that. I know the, a ball hit off his face mask. Oh, the great underrated play by Rocky Sin on that in the fourth quarter. We have so many guys that can cover. Rocky Sin and Ronald Darby don't even get on the field right now. 
I think it's amazing what's happening with this defense right now. Got to give credit to all of the dudes that were out there on the field. The guy that I want to focus on is is Justin Matabike and Kyle Van Noy. Those two, Clowney didn't get as many snaps because of Oway's return. I'll, I'll definitely do a video on Oway uh, this this week if you guys would like that, man. Let me know what you thought of the Ravens' defense. These first four possessions were lights out defense, made things difficult for everybody on, on the Lions' offense, including golf, obviously. But the offensive line, that's the part that – that really shocked me. The, the Lions have a really high-level offensive line, and the Ravens' interior defensive linemen, edge defenders, were really able to get into them and overwhelm them with effort and, and playing downhill. I thought it was a, a one of the best starts on defense that I have seen a Ravens defense make in a long time. Reminded me of that Chargers game at home in 2021 where we just overwhelmed them in the first quarter and a half and really took their offense apart piece by piece, man. I appreciate you guys' time if you check this video out. Let me know what you think of it in the comments section. If you think other Ravens fans would enjoy this content, this look at how the defense just balled out to start the game in Week 7 win over the Lions, then please consider grabbing a link to this video, uh, sharing it out on social media to help this content get more reach.